Hello YouTube. Uh, today we're going to go back to some sequences and seeing if they converge or diverge. Uh, we're just going to jump into an example problem. So if you have the sequence uh, where n plus 3 or is where you have a sub n equals n plus 3 over n, uh, to find out if it converges or, di or diverges, um, you simply take the limit as n approaches infinity of that function. You can make this into a function. a sub n is kind of think of as f of x, and I graphed it down here. Um, pay attention what we're pretty much doing if you just look at it limit wise uh, you could you would notice that the limit goes to one and therefore it converges the only reason or one reason I should say that you can figure out this limit is think about as n gets super super big as it keeps approaching infinity and goes on and on and on and on and on this number is going to get infinitely big and this number is going to get infinitely big um, but it doesn't really matter about this plus 3 because as both numbers get really, really big, they're both going to be going at the same rate. Um, so you can kind of ignore, if you want to like think of an algebraic way, first you'd have to ignore this. Um, and then n over n is 1. You could think of it like that as a way to approach it. So the n's cancel and you get n equals 1. Um, but if you think of it conceptually and graphically, uh, first you start... Um, and it's getting really, really big, so if you keep going this way, it's uh, gradually, gradually, gradually approaching 1 um, as your limit. Uh, if you convert this n plus, n plus 3 over n, is kind of like saying x plus 3 over x is your f of x. So remember, when, for some reason with converging and diverging series, um, and sequences and stuff. They always use a sub n, and then people get really confused because they don't realize it's not a function. So, let not that be you, I guess. So we're going to try another problem. Okay, so now we have this other function. It's pretty much the same, but notice how we have the something out in front of it. And what that is, that negative 1 to the nth power, pretty much is saying that each term is going to alternate between a positive and a negative number. So the first thing you always want to do to determine convergence or divergence is take the limit of the function, um, a of n treated as a function. Now, from the previous example, we know that this goes to 1. Um, however, now that we have this term attached to it, what does that do to the limit? Well, if we keep having a negative number, a positive number, a negative number, and a positive number, in fact, it's actually going to alternate between negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, positive 1. Anyway, you, if it's just going to keep going up and down between 1 and negative 1. You could graph this, but you could also notice that it's always going to be 1 or negative 1, 1 or negative 1. It's never going to converge to one point. Therefore, it's going to diverge. Um, is your answer diverge and that's again because you're going to keep going um, up and down 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 and if you have a line say going through here and you're going and you're taking the limit in this direction you're never going to go it's not there's never going to be a converging at one place it's always going to keep bouncing to infinity um, so that's the answer for that one okay so now we have another example this time we have an alternating uh, sequence, but notice how the function's different in that the denominator is uh, larger than the power on the numerator. So um, we're first going to take the limit of the function. And here's, again, if we're going back to the little shortcut tricks I use, uh, since if you're approaching infinity, adding 3 is very, it will make no effect because it's n that's going to infinity, and an infinity plus 3 is not bigger than infinity. It's the same thing. Um, that's a concept for when dealing with terms such, or when dealing with uh, infinity. So you ignore that term. And remember, when we had n over n, they, those two canceled and equal to 1, but now we have n over n squared, so the n on top is going to cancel, and you're going to have 1 over n. So it's like taking the limit of an alternating series of or sequence of 1 over n. Now, even though it's alternating, if you look at this graph here, is 1. So this graph here is 1 over x, and that's like saying 1 over n. Remember, n and x doesn't matter what the variable is, but looking at this graphically, as you approach infinity, you are gradually getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, which is 0. And even though it's alternating, it's bouncing so small, you cannot even tell, like, it makes no impact. Kind of like when we ignored the 3, it made no impact in this case because uh, the numerator is larger on the bottom and we're not converging to a whole number um, if this was not present. Um, this that pretty much means 
that we are convergent to zero. Um, so this will go to zero. This will go to zero, and it's converging. Okay. So I guess we'll just wrap it up here. Um, I guess three problems is good enough for now. Um, but hope this helped in terms of the shortcuts I had um, and understanding how you could look at it graphically or just analytically in algebra through the limits method as well.